the Reedy Set Grow podcast with Trish Reedy. Welcome to Reedy Set Grow, the podcast that inspires you to grow into the person you are meant to be. I'm your host, Trish Reedy. I'm a local mortgage lender here in Kansas City. I just love our community. We've got such good people who are doing amazing, inspirational, interesting things. So excited to have Mindy Hargesheimer on our show today. Thank you so much for coming. Thanks for having me. I probably should have clarified that beforehand, but (laughs) No, you're a natural at it. I love it. I love it. So Mindy, you are a little more famous for a different, um, (laughs) a different at- Right? Yeah. And that's pro- that's going to get a name at some yeah. point. But, yeah, makes um, sense. Yeah, so your friends know you as Mindy, but mm-hmm. the rest of the town probably knows you as... Kansas City Bucket List. Yes. Yes, so on Instagram. T- tell yeah. us about this. How did it get started? Yeah, totally. So um, I... A couple years ago, so it's been a little over three years, and I have always worked in the corporate world. Mm -hmm. I've done sales. I've done primarily sales. And I was actually on maternity leave um, three and a half years ago with my Mm -hmm. now three and a half year old. And I just reached the point where I needed a creative outlet. Yeah. I was getting burnt out the corporate world. Um, Parenting. (laughs) Parenting. Yeah, exactly. But so we moved from Chicago five years ago. Okay. We love to get out and explore. We're kind of like the the um, Mm self-proclaimed anti-homebodies. So we were going out. Casey, people were like, where are you hearing about all these places? Like, we have been living here for 15, 20 years. What is Jay Rieger? What is going on? And so I basically put it together where I was like, I'm going to start an Instagram account in addition Uh to my personal one. I Uh loved taking photos. I kind of rediscovered a love for writing and kind of put it all together and thought, well, this could be fun, you know, to start getting in touch with restaurant owners and different networking. And it really just kind of exploded organically. I think people, we talk a lot about the home pride of Kansas City. Yes. And so people were all about, oh my gosh, where do I go look at this art? Where do I go to that restaurant? And it has just taken off. Yeah, it's really interesting. There's not very many places in the world where you can walk around and see people wearing shirts. Right. That just like, it's not a sports team. It's just, we love our town. We do. And I, I'm kind of curious, like where we think that started from, you know, I'm sure there's a whole story (laughs) because I do wonder, I'm like, does Nashville have the same pride? Does Austin, like, I think we do have sort of a unique situation that is hard to replicate. Yeah. Yeah. And so you're helping everyone find all those little nicks and crannies, all those cool places. Yeah. How do you, how do you find the places that you feature? Oh my gosh. Well, I mean, in the beginning, it it definitely was a lot of research, just getting in there Mm -hmm. and figuring out, I mean, everything from kind of the white tablecloth to the dive bar to, and we love everything. So it's not even just about the food. It's like what art exhibit is going to be free at the Nelson that we could take the kids to. Yep. Um, I have an obsession with street art murals so I started oh my gosh, getting I into that, that. that's got free so to do much of it. yeah it's so cool it's so picture worthy yeah. and um you know but I mean at the end of the day it really just comes down to I never stop looking for things to do or like mm-hmm. people would eventually come to me and say hey where can we go get um where can we go on a like a, a brewery tour or mm-hmm. whatever mm-hmm. so I would just start researching all the different breweries and it just kind of organically started happening that right. way and then people started finding me and so it's a little bit of everything yeah. you know people coming to me saying we'd love to have you in and me going oh my gosh there's this hidden speakeasy yeah you know that I never knew about right so, yeah so I imagine uh the pandemic and the shutdown is pretty hard for somebody that's an anti-homebody um, yeah, it is, you know, and, and where I thought you were going with that was <laughs> most people are like, well, you must be out of things to be posting about, yeah. you know, you, what are you even doing? And I'm right? like, well, you'd, too. you'd yeah. be surprised, you know, I mean, first of all, in the food scene in particular, in particular, like our restaurants are still trying to survive. Right. And, and so they're struggling, see, they're struggling yeah. big time. And so like, if you look at how they've pivoted, you've got everything from, Jay Rieger making hand sanitizer to restaurants are doing cocktail kits to go and family meal kits to go. So like, even if you're not eating out. That has been a lifesaver for our family. Yeah. My business has been so busy this year. And at the end of the day, the last thing I want to do is put dinner together. Oh my gosh. And we hate to cook. We are terrible at cooking. We don't know the first thing about it, but love to eat. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. But I think too, um, especially with COVID, like in the beginning, yeah, we were home, but you had these companies reaching out to people like myself to say, hey, we'd love to extend this to you if you'd be Mm -hmm. interested in posting about it to spread the word. And I am very passionate about a small business here Mm -hmm. and 
putting the word out there about what people can do and how they can support and give back. And so, um, you know, we've gotten better over time. Like, it'll be interesting to see if we have another lockdown, if you will. Yeah. Um, but as we've sort of gotten used to the new norm, you can still go out and do things safely, uh-huh. um, you know, and free things to do or go watch the Chiefs, things like that. Yeah. So, but yeah, it's, yeah. it's really hard for me to sit at home yeah. <laughs> and do nothing. I hear you. I hear you. So yeah. is there is there like an area of... I don't know, activities or that you haven't really broken into yet that you're interested in? That's a good question. Um, Like I think about there's got to be great hiking trails here, but I have no yeah. idea how to find them. Somebody you know, actually, some weird stuff like that. Yeah. Well, okay. So a couple thoughts there. One, I just came across somebody who put out a list of like 60 different hiking trails that you can do in Casey. Who knew? I need this. You'll so, have to send it to me. Yeah, I will send it to you. Like, thank goodness somebody is out there doing that. The people that are really passionate about it. So no, I'm tapping into that to try to yeah. figure out like, well, what would be relevant to where we would want to go and, and mm-hmm. what to do. Um, you know, I don't know that there's like one area in particular that we haven't, or I haven't gotten into. I have to tell you something really embarrassing though. I've never been to a Chiefs game in my life. Okay. And I'm supposed to be like a go-to Kansas City person. So I have to tell you that going to a Chiefs game and doing the whole tailgating thing is definitely something that I need to get into my territory. Maybe not this year. Probably not A little strange experience. Yeah. Um, But I mean, I think ultimately it's really for me all about sort of like the unique and new and different Mm -hmm. kinds of food that people can try that you wouldn't know about or kind of the hidden gems. Like that's just, there's a never ending supply of those that I want to keep finding. Really. So, yes, it's hard to even repeat content or going places because we have an infinite amount of things and places that we can go and experience. So So do you feel like you're more for people that are that that are tourists that are coming into town or do you feel like you're more for the local folk? So that's a good question. I would say primarily the local people. So I think that. You know, my whole thing is like you can live in Kansas City and not even know how close you are to something that is an incredible experience. And I kind of look at it as like you can travel your way around the globe. Mm -hmm. You can go get Ethiopian food. You can go get Thai food. You can go get um, you can go to the Nelson and do a free exhibit where they do like the Chinese New Year, things Uh like that. So like if you're here, you take it for granted. You know, like when we lived in Chicago, we would only go to the Hancock or something if people would come to visit or go down to Navy Pier. And I think we underestimate where we are and what mm-hmm. you can do um, and not always have to go back to the same restaurant. And when you go and do it, you have so much fun or a family yeah. would have so much fun yeah. um, to do it. But that being said, I do have people contact me all the time. They'll send me a DM saying, hey, we've never been to Kansas City. We're coming. What should we do? Uh-huh. Um, so now I've started creating guides, whether you okay. live here or whether you're coming in town. On uh-huh. my website, I now have guides like, if you live here, here's a fun staycation you can mm-hmm. do. And if you have never been here or you've got family coming to visit for the first time, here are my recommendations if yeah. you've never been yeah. before. So I kind of cater to both, but yeah. primarily so, local. So obviously you have a lot of followers uh-huh. and I imagine most local businesses would love to be featured yeah. in front of that many people. How did, how Generally. would somebody go about like, do you just Connecting choose yeah. or, you know, did they have to come and ask you? How does that work? Well, in the beginning, it was just, I mean, it still is now a lot of places that we naturally go to. Mm-hmm. Like my family is so accustomed to me taking an obscene number of photos so I can capture whatever we're doing, right. you know? Right. Um, but in the beginning, it definitely was a lot of outreach uh-huh. saying, kind of introducing myself, would love to feature you. It's national day of, or would you be interested yeah. in doing a giveaway? Huge fan of the giveaways. Uh-huh. They work very well from the standpoint of natural growth. Yeah. spreading the word about you and the person that you're featuring. So mm-hmm. it was a lot of outreach in the beginning. Um, now it's a lot of invitations, which I'm super grateful for. Sure. I mean, we live a very fun life getting to try all these different restaurants right. and different things going on. Um, but it's a little bit of a mix of just us on our own on the weekend mm-hmm. going somewhere and just mm-hmm. paying on our own and documenting to people inviting us to try things to mm-hmm. reaching out to say yeah. I'd love to feature you guys if you want to do a little trade yeah that kind of thing but this isn't your full-time day job no either. and tell it will us never a bit, be tell yeah. us a little bit about that <laughs> yeah so you know for me personally I think the whole influencer world is so much fun and I always wanted it to be kind of like my passion project where uh-huh. I didn't want the fun to go away I never wanted my content to turn into everything is sponsored and uh-huh. That type of thing. Um, My aspiration getting into it 
And actually where I ended up was to get full time into a career that was more social media content creation, Mm -hmm. which ended up happening earlier this year. So um, I work for a company called City Lifestyle and Mm -hmm. they're owned by Lifestyle Publications here. So Johnson County Lifestyle, Leewood Lifestyle, Uh all of those publications are part of our um, company, which has been around for 11 years. Um, But City Lifestyle, I now oversee the digital content creation and our social media. And so I'm quite literally doing the bucket list thing, Uh but doing it for my professional career. And I do it here in Kansas City, but we're also going to be doing it for upwards of 50 different cities across the country. Wow, that's so So fun. So it's all lifestyle content and figuring Uh out what people want to know about their city. So what what do people want to know? They want to know where to eat. Food is a big one. Yeah. Yes, people want to know that. Um, people want to know, people love the street art. Mm-hmm. People constantly, like that is one of the most highly engaged pieces of content that you can do. People want to know where that is. Right. Um, but I would say generally speaking, coffee, uh-huh. food is a big one. Um, I dabble in every area, but like fashion doesn't come up as much. Like people mm-hmm. do want to know maybe where they can find unique gifts and things like that. Uh-huh. Um, but it's more about the kind of like the corner restaurant that they haven't heard of before that would be fun to try. That's yeah. new. Yeah. So, yeah. That's great. Yeah. That's great. It's so fun. do you have any advice for someone that would be interested in trying to become an influencer? I mean, uh, I, I, don't, I don't feel yeah. like you really set out to be an influencer yeah. so much as have a creative outlet, Yeah, but... I imagine but that'd be a, a but goal I did for somebody in some regard, right? Like, sure. I mean, honestly, when I got into it, I thought, well, how fun would that be if you can get the trade and yeah. get to do all these fun things and not, I mean, transparently always have to pay for it. Sure. But I think the biggest thing that I've seen is one, you have to be grateful and very vocal and appreciative for the things that people are gifting you. So mm-hmm. when people get into it, everybody's like, I want to get paid. I want something for free. Well, sure. I mean, we're all human, mm-hmm. but, um, the, the times that I've seen and I've actually heard through other people, people start to feel like I want to see and be seen and I want to take the picture of myself at a restaurant or mm-hmm. a new cocktail bar opening up, but they don't necessarily put as much time and effort into telling the story of the person who's mm. put their blood, sweat and tears into the business. Uh-huh. And, um, it, you know, you have to make sure that you are authentically into it, of mm-hmm. course, like uh, that's going to come through. Um, I would say definitely using your own voice. I mean, I kind of make fun of myself that I'm very punny, very uh-huh. nerdy. People know that about me, but I don't know. The that's queen just kind of, of the dad joke. Yeah, right? <laughs> basically. I'm like, but that works for me and that makes me happy and or, sort of yeah. laugh or whatever. And I'm sure people probably, you know, I've had people sort of giggle at it, but, <laughs> but I would say like really being authentically you, that will take you farther than trying to replicate what everybody else is trying to do. Mm-hmm. Um, not trying to get into a field that you don't um, feel super passionate about and being very appreciative sending thank you notes to people for Mm -hmm. including you, Mm -hmm. you know, to their grand opening, things like that. Um, That networking piece is crucial. Yeah. Well, especially in this big, small town that we live in, right? Yep. Right. Exactly. Because you've got a lot of different groups like that will oversee multiple restaurants or Mm -hmm. um, multiple boutiques and brands and things like that. Yeah. 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 So tell me a couple of your favorite things about Kansas City. Well, okay. So like I mentioned before, um, I mean, one, we moved here again from Chicago. So the cost of living, the quality of life here, when you have something to compare it to, like we adore Chicago. We go there multiple times a year to see family. Um, But you get to the point where things like traffic really take a toll on you. Things Mm -hmm. like winter can really take a toll on you. Mm -hmm. Um, And the fact that like we have that to compare it to, we're very grateful for the cost of living and the quality Mm -hmm. of life and it not feeling too overwhelming with the noise and the traffic and things like that. Um, and then I mentioned earlier, one of my favorite things is to travel around Kansas city, kind of like you're traveling around the globe. Yeah. So trying the different cuisines and meeting the different people Mm -hmm. that are behind it. Like this is the the place where people are so kind and they love to talk to you. And it really Mm -hmm. is like one of the most fulfilling, gratifying things to hear someone's story and to know that you're supporting them. Yeah. And you know, in this, in my space, like giving back by kind of spreading the word for people to Mm -hmm. go try it. Um, but I, I think that, you know, we get the question all the time, well, you've got to miss the food scene in Chicago. And I, I say every time I am never running out of places to eat here. Yeah. I mean, it's just constantly evolving. So yeah. the food yeah, scene that's is, cool. is pretty good. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Man. <laughs> Man. Yeah. Well, let's wrap up with okay. a few of my favorite rapid fire questions. Okay. Got it. Um, see if you can continue to inspire us. Okay. Hopefully. Okay. So what's your favorite quote? 
Um, I will use my own, which is every day is on my bucket list. So that actually came up before this whole Instagram thing. And that's uh-huh. where the name came from. I love it. Yeah. But it, it, it really is all about like try every single day to do something new, learn something new. And it's really about just being like positive, fulfilled, yeah. you know, feeling good. I love that. Thanks. That's so different. Yeah. Yeah. I love that's it. great. Um, so you're, you're, you've had a bad day. You've slept it off. You're ready mm-hmm. to go the next day. You're going to crank up the tunes in the shower. What are you listening to? Oh, Okay, that's a good one. Um, I'm trying to go through what's on. So uh, right now I'm in a, um, I think they're called Odessa. They're yeah. kind of, do you know who I'm talking mm-hmm. about? Did I say that right? I think so. I sound like the old lady who's like, oh, um, but that's a big one for me. They're like a little bit in kind of like the techno yeah. mode, but that's been lately on my playlist. Love it. Yeah. Love it. What's the accomplishment you're most proud of? Well, I mean, I could say the obvious of like, I'm super proud of my family. We have two kids, two daughters that clearly adore. Um, we have a really, really, I, I honestly think that I would say the family life that we've created where we are exploring and yeah. think, you know, believing that we're giving our kids this kind of adventurous life, even if it's local, uh-huh. I think it's been really fun, um, to teach them to see the world in a way that, you know, appreciate other people and appreciate yeah. the different things around you. Um, so I would say kind of that little culture of our family. Yeah. You're teaching probably. them that every day is yeah. the bucket list. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. And I want to do that through traveling too. Once we get back right. to the normal so, world. So what are two things left on your bucket list? Okay. Well, travel is never ending, but I would say mm-hmm. New Zealand mm-hmm. is probably top on my list. Like if I had to choose one place to go to right now, mm-hmm. it would be New Zealand. Um, and then, hmm, what would be another one? I should be prepared for this. Um, I would just say, I mean, honestly, it's mostly travel. Yeah. So I would say the other thing that we, the other place we really want to go to is um, like Peru and Argentina. Oh my gosh. Or two other yeah. So I would probably yeah. put that as family travel. Those would probably be the two. That I, I love do. it. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. Um, okay. Finish this sentence. I am most inspired by. Um, I am most inspired by the stories of people accomplishing the things that they're doing that takes the most risk like a a small business owner Mm -hmm. you know I've worked in the corporate world I mentioned that I've never had the full courage to go and take my life savings and start the thing that I really wanted to do yeah so I think I find a lot of inspiration which is probably why I connect so well to these people and want to share their story right um I find so much inspiration in the people that are are doing what they really love but also like sweating through the process so right every time I hear another story it just inspires me to want to go you know, explore another place and tell that story. Yeah. So, that's people. cool. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. Well, Mindy, you are definitely part of Kansas City's bucket list. And thank you so <laughs> thank much. You. Thanks for having for me. For being here. So fun. Yeah. yeah. I'm Trish Reedy. I'm your host. And this has been Reedy Set Grow.